What is it? Well, it's uh, the end of September here in Canada. And uh, before you know it, we're going to need some heat. And last winter, I was experimenting with uh, these rocket stoves. And uh, this one here, I had um, cast it with uh, refractory cement. But I didn't have enough. I didn't have all the uh, as as much refractory cement as I should have had. So it was um, it was down here. It wasn't quite full. So refractory cement is kind of expensive, and uh, I had a little bit of uh, fireplace mortar left. So I went and got some regular uh regular cement concrete for floors and footings so it's really strong stuff and i was going to pour a small footing outside and then i realized uh it's getting late in the year why don't i pour a little bit on top of here and finish this off so what i used was one bag of uh perlite i think it's a 10 liter bag i can't remember so uh, one bag of perlite, one bag of cement, and half a bag of fireplace mortar. So the top is get, the top uh, probably four inches is going to be a little bit different uh, of a mixture. There is perlite in there, but it's going to be stronger, but I don't know if it'll take the heat. I guess we'll find out. This is only an experimental unit anyway, but let me tell you. I've probably got like $100 into this experiment because all the perlite and refractory cement and stove pipes and whatever else I had to buy. Then my time, I had to modify this steel uh, barbecue stand. It's on wheels and it's got heavy duty casters. I think it weighs, I don't even know, probably weighs four or 500 pounds. She's solid. And, uh, are you... We're getting into the season again, so I uh, can't remember this exactly. It's about 18, 19 inches wide. Um, it's about, what do we got there? 22 inches, 22 inches tall. And this, this is a 24 inch, uh, 24 inch, uh, square, and it's longer than that, so 24, I think it's, uh, 30 inches long. 30 or 32 inches long, I can't remember, I don't have my proper measuring tape here. But anyway, I finished uh, pouring the cast core last night. Uh, it, I think it took me two bags of cement and a full bag of mortar, uh, fireplace mortar. And uh, a couple shovelfuls of earth, perlite and water. I had to do two batches. So one uh, one bag of cement per batch, and half a bag of fireplace mortar per batch. I thought one bag would be enough to top this off, but it's so big. It's so big. So much bigger than my other one. And uh, next thing I need to do is get this out. I want If I pull it out, the cement will dry faster from the inside. So I'm going to pull that out. Uh... This is the back side of the unit, and this is the front side of it. It needs to be cleaned up because I spilled cement, but most of that will just wipe off. This is going to be like an ash clean out here. And if you've seen my other rocket stove videos, um, when, I, when I burn pellets, 
I let the air come in in the front there or in that port. So I don't know if I'll be running pellets in this one or not, but uh, I have burnt pellets very successfully before. I've cooked pizzas in my rocket stove, cooked um, apple pies. I've ran them on pellets, I've ran them on hardwood, I've ran them on softwood, I ran them on emergency sumac survival scenario, <laughs> which is where I took wet sumac in the middle of winter and burned it. I've done a lot with this and I do it all hands on. I learn for myself and uh, I do it all myself. You can learn some things online, but a lot of the things you learn, this is not something that people have, like, it's not really a common type of stove, and it's, it is in other parts of the world, but around here, people will tell you something that might, that they think might work, but it won't, or they might have done something that you can't, or whatever, I don't know, but as far as the unknown goes, and rocket stoves are pretty much unknown around here. You just got to learn. You just got to get your hands dirty and you just got to find out what works and what doesn't. I've, this will be my second year of experimenting with them. Or my second uh, winter season. And uh, like I said, I've done lots of experiments. I've, uh, I've documented a lot of my experiments. And uh, this is going to be no exception. I'm going to document this one also. So anyway, that's what I got right now. I'm going to clamp the... I was wiggling this here just to get it loose a little bit. And uh, it's not it's not wet, but it's, but it's still a little damp, you know. I don't know how to explain it. It's just been overnight. So now is the perfect time to take this, uh, this sleeve out because that won't be staying. It'll just be pure concrete inside the core. When I burn it all out, when I burn this wooden core out, this is a sacrificial core. It'll be nothing but... Um, hopefully refractory cement down in where the hottest areas are and uh, I have to build a riser this is only a temporary mold if I couldn't get it out it would be a sacrificial mold but I'm pretty sure I can get it out because I've had it wiggling you can see I got a crack around there and um, usually I'll just clamp the vice grips on here and tap them up with a hammer and it'll probably come right out so anyway as the as the season gets colder, we're in September now, near the end of September, I'll be working on this. And I might uh, fire up my other one, my compact 6-inch uh, rocket mass hybrid. This one's, uh, I think this one was a little bit bigger, like I had a bigger uh, feed port and uh, a bigger burn chamber. It's a little bit slightly different than my 6-inch and this one takes up a lot more floor space too. It's a big cast rectangle. But anyway, uh, that's all I can tell you right now. If you like the rocket stoves or if you like my rocket stove videos, then keep a watch out or give me a thumbs up or uh, subscribe because I got more coming and I've done lots of them in the past. I haven't really done anything over the summertime, but we're getting into the season where I'll be playing with these more, more often again. And keep an eye out for the next video on these. I'll be doing something with this one here real soon. And I might dig out my other 6 inch compact uh, mass heater. And uh, see if I can do another cooking episode on that one. <laughs> anyway, that's it for this episode guys. So uh, stay tuned and subscribe. Check out the next ones.